One of the most disappointing things that I've come to know is how little Wally gets talked about these days. It has been well over a decade since its release and remains one of the greatest masterpieces Pixar has ever produced, one that feels more real throughout the eyes of a robot who simps over another robot in a dystopian future where humanity lives in this gigantic cruise ship away from an Earth littered with garbage. It's just so perfect how it weaves well its theme throughout the eyes of this curious robot, who is also the last of its kind to make a love story that really touches all and no other animated film could ever capture that the way that this did. The themes of this movie can relate to environment, technology, and religion, and how all of that ties into humanity's complacency. We are showcased a world that is literally trashed by humans by a mega corporation like by and large which virtually owned every aspect of human life, and because of their waste mismanagement, they sent humans into space to live while the world gets cleaned up, which they spectacularly fail, and everyone just gets used to living up in the sky with technology, having robots do over half of their jobs. It's not that technology in this film is inherently bad with all the advancement that gets done, but the themes through this is humanity's own complacency that makes it bad. How they are eventually portrayed as fat and lazy, not getting off their screens or doing anything to improve their relationships. They become disconnected because of all this consumerism and material unimportance, which becomes more real when they put up graphics of old commercials showcasing real life humans in a Pixar film and then transitioning back to reveal how much humanity has lost their way. Of course, finally, we also have the relationship between Wally and Eve being a representation of Adam and Eve, how Wally's loneliness represents the same loneliness of Adam before God created Eve, and how by and large represents a false god that dragged humanity away from him, and of course in this case, the Earth, forcing us to abandon everything that we have known, where Wally is the one to bring that back to showcase that not all was really lost. And its best parts is due to its minimal dialogue. I mean, sure, humans talk and robots say a few words here and there, but it's all sparsely populated throughout the film that focuses solely on the sounds and emotions through these droids and it somehow still works. You can tell what they are feeling in the moment without much facial expressions designed within their programming. And so with that said, it's only fair to dive back into the world of Wally and why it is absolute perfection. And it starts by showcasing the wider galaxy in space, the final frontier humanity has always strived to look after beyond Earth, beautifully shown through the music of Hello Dolly, which actually becomes an important part of the film as we'll see later on, where despite this upbeat and beautiful music, it quickly pans back to Earth littered with satellites and other trash in space, zooming in to discover something far worse with music making this feel like the world of Fallout. Feeling positive but looking absolutely negative. We soon see that this music is actually being played by one robot who is called Wally, which actually stood for Waste Allocation Load Lifter Earth Class, and he is the last of his kind doing his job to collect garbage and turn them into skyscrapers. This is where the music becomes more ominous and reveals wider shots of Earth being just one gigantic landfill, with the only robot left on Earth that has sentience. There is nothing else where no animals could be found at all, but these big holographic billboards advertising the ruins of by and large which help trash the planet in the first place. By and large was a corporation that started out as a frozen yogurt store that managed to acquire different businesses, letting it run the consumer lives to put them in the power of almost every government on earth to their social lives. And then we discover how they're the ones responsible for putting humans into space in the first place and leaving the entire world to trash, only to be cleaned by robots. Showcased once again by these live action scenes to make the world seem real that it could have happened, where that portraying us here in the live action showcases that we were having all of these nice things supposed to be on this short trip to space, and how living like this can only result in complacency and result in something far worse losing our humanity in the process as one could probably tell when the video abruptly ends, showcasing the current state of the world where they last left on the Axiom. We then get to see Wally's home and see more of what he is like. He loves collecting various items he humans left behind, thinking of what it could be used for, and has taken a liking for the film Hello Dolly, which by this point is almost a thousand years old. In the real world, this film is only 54 years old by now, which really puts into perspective how far in the future this film takes place. But this scene actually becomes important to this character. You see how he kind of sings along to the songs and then notices the scene with Michael Crawford and Marianne McAndrews singing It Only Takes a Moment, holding hands with each other as he tries to copy that with his own hands. It represents his loneliness and search for something similar in love to what they see on the screen, and looking out to the stars to see if someone else is truly out there in this world. And then the day ends by him closing a door when the dust door comes. 
showcasing how badly unhabitable the Earth has become in the ruins of a large city, how the environment is truly out of balance in the evening without humanity at all and just trash everywhere around the place. And then, of course, he wakes up to start the day again, thinking it would be the same until we discover a green plant that actually changes everything in the course of the movie. Where the same day, a spaceship actually lands crashing down and crashes his world completely, finally introducing us to the other robot who he immediately falls in love with, a glossy egg-shaped unit known as Extraterrestrial Vegetation Evaluator, or EVE, a robot that is meant to see if Earth is habitable once again for humanity to come back. And you could definitely tell why he's falling in love with her. First of all, he's another being that exists which ties back into the Adam and Eve story of not being completely lonely and more with a partner, representing something greater, and of course also truly represents an ethereal figure that puts his dirt-covered mechanical parts to shame. It's a funny start to their relationship where Eve tries to blow up everything else, knowing in their programming how dangerous Earth is at this point, but actually opens up after Wally showcases his friendliness and then eventually shows Eve his collection in his home, once again playing the Hello Dolly and intriguing her in that same scene for the things that Wally clamored for, representing something greater for their relationship. But then we have this moment cut short when she actually finds the thing that she was programmed to find, the thing that is her purpose for a robot and then shuts down completely, accomplishing the first step of her mission to send humans back. And of course, because of not knowing her programming, he becomes worried about what happens with her and goes on this date with her to try to discover the source of all this until the ship comes back to take Eve once again, spurring Wally into a chase to save her in his mind and investigate what exactly is going on. And this takes him on a journey throughout outer space holding on for dear life on a ship and showcases the beauty of the solar system like other planets, the sun, the rings of Neptune, and the wider galaxy before arriving at the home ship of the Axiom. And this shows us to a more different robots like Mo, who is surprised at the dirtiness of Wally and the security droids that alerts the discovery of the successful Eve and sends her on their way to headquarters for investigation, spurring Wally into this new adventure throughout various other of robots and finally humanity itself. And like I said earlier from humanity's live action appearance, they are now in animation form like a Pixar film should be, representing the dystopian present of humanity itself. Because of the complacency of the past 700 years, the humans of the present represent how much we lost our humanity from the humans of the past shown in the live action scenes. Everyone now is fat and just glued to their screens, only having online conversations with people literally next to them. Nobody here is currently living, they are surviving in complacency and laziness. And you can see it in their faces from both the past and the present how they were clearly smiling, talking, and doing other things that most of us do in this world, but now they are just totally isolated with each other, unable to do anything else, just content at their current situation. Situations. And you clearly see this when a man named John mistook Wally for a waiter bot because of this refusal, he falls down and now cannot get up until Wally actually helps him. And when you see they create a detour, no one else just really notices, they're still glued to their screens, not knowing what the hell is actually going on because of their stubborn complacency, and showcasing how people like John are actually shocked out of the system when they need help. And we get to see more of that when another human named Mary is also shocked out of the system when Wally needs to see E. <laughs> Her entire reaction is that of surprise to the world around her, like literally this is the first time seeing other things rather than the screen she's been glued to her whole life. And that is a brilliant choice to showcase how far we have gone in this world from our own laziness through technology. Because if you remember from the earlier scenes, these seats where everyone is staying in was just meant to be relaxation chairs that grandma could actually use, but now it's basically a life support tool used for us to even travel. We cannot walk anymore in this world, and the revelation of this new world to her actually she becomes greater when she discovers for the very first time that they actually have a pool. I didn't know we had a pool. Nobody here actually knows that pools even exist even if they're two inches from it because they are on the screen 24-7. And frankly, that's not the only thing they actually forget they have in life. Because when we get introduced to the captain of the Axiom, where Wally actually hides to see what is going on, we go through his daily routine and see what he does before knowing what exactly is happening behind him. This is where we discover that this is the 700th year of the 5 year cruise. Oh hey, I see the ship's log is showing that today is our 700th anniversary of our 5 year cruise. Well, I'm sure our forefathers would be proud to know that 700 years later we'd be doing the exact same thing they were doing. 
they are celebrating the fact that this short-term cruise is now over seven centuries up here in space, and the captain and all of humanity show little awareness to that fact of what that actually means. It's this scenario that actually shows how far we have gone from the past, and looking back on it and looking at society now makes you wonder if this is a reality that can become more possible each day we live. With all of the advancements of technology, one can only think we become more useless and forget who we are. But then the autopilot informs the captain of a positive probe, introducing him to the video that a positive plant means they are ready to return to Earth from this ancient video. It means it's time to go back home. Home? We're going back? And it's the fact that actually shocks the captain of the news how that they can return to Earth. Everyone on this ship has actually been born on this ship and they have never known what Earth is like. The video also brings up the fact of humanity's obesity and how they can actually just use the jogging track to get back in shape once again. Track. And it actually showcases how little they all know of the ship at this point and what they actually have in front of them. They didn't know they have a jogging track and they didn't know they have a pool. But while discovering to see where the plant is, it turns out it is missing. Where the situation becomes a false alarm and actually sends her back to be checked while having Wally introducing himself to the captain so it can be cleaned up and introduces dirt to him. It's a situation that actually makes everything seem like nothing until the captain analyzes what is happening discovering that this dirt actually comes from Earth and spurs him into this journey about learning what is Earth. And this is where we find that during this entire sequence between the two, the plant was actually removed by one of the security droids. How behind the scenes when they were able to inspect Eve and have Wally drop down, Otto removed the plant and had it sent for destruction where Wally was actually hiding on that ship at the time, appearing to be destroyed, but then discovered he escaped in time with a fire extinguisher, traversing through space and discovering that he in fact saved the plant. And instead of shutting down in the moment, she actually celebrates with them and they both fly off around the ship and sway to this beautiful music, encapsulating both their newfound relationship blossoming in the sky. And this is the scene that actually gets the attention of other humans that Wally met in John and Mary, both whom who have been changed to open their eyes because of him. Mary first of all took a more open approach of exploring the ship and actually dragged John back to him where both of them actually recognize him in the sky and actually opened up their relationship together. I it's another beautiful moment beyond Wally and Eve's love, where you discover scenes like this where humans are also falling in love with each other and actually reopening that relationship theme that humans have lost in the course of this film. It represents a new change to go back to something that they had. What we are seeing now is that they are interacting with each other instead of being isolated by the means of technology. And while all of this is happening, the captain actually becomes completely enamored by Earth itself, and he is falling in love with the beauty and history of the planet we call home, where the time he is supposed to go to bed, he's actually still very inquisitive about our own history and what it means to be human in this moment. These scenes are really beautiful to showcase how much humanity is regaining something that we lost. We are slowly getting back to the point that made us human. And it's after this where Eve decides to go back up and give it back to Captain McCrea. Initially, she is shocked at that fact and amazed that it is here and wanting to discover what Earth is like now, exciting him return back to home and what it is like. But when he sees it, he sees a desolate place not like the ones he had first heard and seen on those images, and one where Eve actually sees the love that Wally had for her in the first place and it saddens her she wasn't able to see that, also trying to hold her hands together representing that same feeling she actually now has for him in the message of loneliness and relationships, and one where Captain McCrea makes the realization that we have to go back to after everything that's happened to what matters the most to us when we lost our way and lost our home and now we have the chance to regain that. Where it also reveals that Otto is in fact the main villain who stopped those plans in the first place. A scene that showcases his directive by CEO Shelby Forthright and how bad they made the planet and how they actually ordered to have every autopilot to stay in space and not return to Earth. And for some in this scene, Otto might seem one dimensional in a villain that follows orders, but I actually think it's great. It represents more of that short mindedness of humanity in this film at this point, where Otto is being a bot upholding that orders he was guided to by the executives to stay, to be surviving in space rather than not living. It's not that typical AI who takes control of himself in a film where most of them have their own personalities and such as a robot, but it's just one that is more representative of the current state of things up in space and one that the captain actually refuses knowing what he has learned and what they have been living like for years at this point. Out there is our home. Home, Otto. And it's in trouble. I can't just sit here and, and do nothing. That's all I've ever done. That's all anyone on this blasted ship has ever done. 
nothing! On the axiom, you will survive. I don't want to survive! I want to live! Must follow my directive. Ah! This scene really shines a light on how Otto has actually been slowly in control of the ship's operation each time a new captain was introduced. And it's one that really takes a turn for the worse in the plans of them locking the captain and disposing of Wally in the process and the plant again. It's a moment that showcases Eve how much she actually cares for Wally now, more than the plant, and actually how Wally in the moment is dedicated to actually sending humanity back to save Eve and everyone else. It's a heartwarming fact to learn how much he's grown, becoming someone who initially had nothing but now has everything to live for. And in the background, the captain actually hatches a plan to stop Otto and have Eve and Wally get the plant delivered to the holodeck to send them home. And also one where he activates the button to prepare everyone for this return, effectively locking them out of their screens to send them to the center of the ship. And because Otto is actually the steering wheel of the ship, this ship actually tilts and sends everyone including Eve backwards attempting to stop them from accomplishing their goals. It's a moment where you think that that Otto has the upper hand stopping the machine, but Wally actually tries to save the day in the process with all the strength he has, almost getting crushed by the machine. And it's a moment where the captain actually gets on his two feet to finally stop him, the moment that represents the change that they have gone through after everything he's discovered throughout the unlikely means of one dirty robot, giving him the strength to take control back to the ship to relearn the steps that humanity had a long time ago, but it all came at the cost of an injured Wally, where you get to see most of them pay their respects to him while the ship activates, and one where the reunion on Earth is cut short by this heroic outcome, Eve trying desperately to repair Wally using her knowledge of what he showed her at the very beginning. And when you think she is successful to repair him, it turns into sadness actually knowing he's actually reset to his original programming. It's a moment of loss for Eve and for everything he did. He saved everyone and now he's actually gone. And in turn, Eve actually feels that sadness and loneliness, the ones that Wally had at the very very beginning of this film. But then when she has a goodbye spark to Wally, it actually turns to reel him back on, moving like he usually did and not noticing he actually locked hands with her in the moment. And it turns this back into a happy beautiful moment where they were able to find love and rescue everyone else, resulting in this grand celebration for everyone when the captain starts to planting plants and humanity starts walking again, returning to who they were hundreds of years ago, getting everything that made them human back and it's all because it only took a moment to live a whole life now. Wally is a true masterpiece that stands out for its important messages and beautiful love story that is truly better than any other. It's a real heartwarming tale to teach us what is really important, whether it could be through the use of the environment through technology or just within humanity and our connection with the world around us and to God in terms of what life really means to us. It's one that will endure for generations and important to keep with what it means to live for each of us and that is what is going to save us in the future. And using Hello Dolly's song throughout this film represents that emotional feelings of love for these robots and us that truly made this film shine in its own right and makes everyone cry no matter how they felt about life. For every bad thing that actually happens, a good thing will eventually appear, especially within the robots like Wally. And with that said, I'm truly all done, so goodbye.